Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. So in this video we're going to be taking a quick look at Redox OS, which is a new Unix-like operating system written in Rust, which is a programming language intended to improve memory safety, amongst other things. Um, now it's available as like a pre-alpha stage um, operating system at the moment. Uh, but you can run it in Quemu and VirtualBox, or on real hardware, if you have hardware that's compatible with it. But today we're going to be using Quemu. Um, so the first thing you have to do if you want to do this is download the demo build, which is found here. This is just the RedoxOS.org book. Um, well, the book available on RedoxOS.org for documentation. Um, and you can read all of this stuff as well, which kind of goes into more detail, like important programs, for example, says it can run GCC and LLVM, which means that um, you can run C programs and stuff like that on it as well, which is good. They're agnostic about the language of the programs that run on Redox, they just want Redox itself to be written in Rust. So, um, yeah, that's good to know. That means we can do some interesting stuff with it later if, if this video is popular. Um, but first off, I've already downloaded this image. So I'm just going to open a terminal and I've got the command ready. So we're just going to run it and it will ask you what your screen resolution is, which in this case for full screen is 1920 by 1080. So we'll pick that. And notice how quickly it boots to the login screen. I'll just full screen this. There's no password by default, so I'll just hit enter. So now we're logged into the desktop. And just have a quick look at what we've got. We've got a basic web browser, which can, we can use to go to my website as a test. And this doesn't quite work right because the logos don't load and the menu doesn't load either. Uh, so as I say, it's quite a basic web browser, but a web browser is a web browser. And we've got a terminal, which comes with some fairly standard commands like df, although note that the paths are different to what they might be on Linux, they're not slash dev slash sda or nvme 0n1 or anything like that. Um, so that's quite different. And you've also got free dash H, which tells us we're only using about 300 megs of the two gigs of memory the system, this virtual machine has been given. Um, and if you want a full list, you can do that. Um, so it does have an installer as well, but we're not going to install it today. We're just going to take a quick look at it. But it kind of comes with a fairly standard set of uh, command line things. It even has Git as well, and DOSBox. It's worth mentioning that um, some of these programs are from Cosmic, which is the new Pop! OS. Well, will be the new Pop! OS. Um, desktop environment, which is also, I believe, in alpha at the moment. You get a choice of text editors. You've got Cosmic Text Editor, which is a graphical one, or you've got Sodium, which is a command line one, which I don't know how to use. But just to show you what it looks like, this is a test file I made earlier. And it just opens in a command line window. So we've also got some of the more interesting things we've got. We've got a version of Free Doom. I don't really know how to play Doom. But I have figured out how to move around and follow the gun. you're not really supposed to play with a trackpad though. I don't know how to open this door, so I'm just going to have to give up here. We 
we have also got Neverball, which is a game I used to love playing as a kid. quite smoothly as you can see, even though it's running in a virtual machine. Not that Neverbill was a demanding game. trying to go so fast, I don't need to. But as you can see, it can run Unix and Linux programs without any issues. You have to recompile them against the, it's called relibc, as well as obviously the rest of the system. That's all we'll do for now. I don't need to show you all of Neverball as much as I would like to keep playing it. Um, so we could try and get some more interesting things running on it as well, if I do an installation. Um, in a vir well, I'll do that in a virtual machine again, because I don't really have a spare machine that's up to compilation and that kind of thing that um, I can do this on. I do have like an old Pentium M laptop, but trying to compile anything on that would just be an exercise in frustration. And I've done enough frustrating things on this YouTube channel already, as you might have seen if you look at some of my old videos, with the montages of frustration of speeding up compiling things by like 5,000%. Um, but that's it for now. There's no way to shut it down as far as I can tell, but you can log out and use the keyboard shortcut to get out of full screen. And you end up with all of this um, information dumped to the console while it's booting and about exceptions and that kind of thing as it's a very well it's very pre-alpha but um, it's still very impressive in my opinion and it's good to see Rust being used more and more I think and Rust and the Linux kernel too to try and keep things running a bit more reliably and a bit more kind of Secure, securely. Anyway, that's it from me for today. There'll be a blog post that comes out alongside this YouTube video. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Maybe if people like this video, we'll do a deeper dive into Redox OS and try and compile some software on it. Um, maybe even Firefox or GTK or something like that. Might be interesting, might be a bit over ambitious, but why not try it? Um, uh, also, leave a comment if you want to see any more, if you want to see more videos like this, or if you've got any ideas for anything you'd like to see. I'm always open to suggestions for my YouTube videos and my blog posts. Anyway, that's it for now. See you in the next one.